tell people here, you yourself said that this was not a very well-known episode um, in, in Israel. Did you say that upstairs? Some parts of it, maybe. But, but tell us about Beaufort, what it was, and when it was abandoned. So, um, well, it, it also starts with my mother, because uh, um, what Everything mother, does. Of course. <laughs> uh, but, well, first of all, my mother lost her uh, brother uh, in 82 in Lebanon, and I, think, and I grew up in a I was young, uh, and I, I grew up in a house that was a bit, uh, uh, that was very gloomy. Uh, my mother has never been the same, she, she, I think. And, and the cemetery, the military cemetery was like a second only. It was, um, it made some kind of effect on me that uh, we, a feeling that we gave enough. I mean, that we, we, we paid the, uh, toughest price and we can't anymore. So I was, in many aspects, I think I was uh, quite oblivious to what was going on. I mean, we, we had soldiers uh, on, on 12 outposts along uh, uh, southern Lebanon, and I've never really, I, I have imagination, but I never even, whenever I was editing music, and I never spent time to, to understand what it looked like, what, what it means. And, um, and only when I was a journalist, and, and, and again I was, I was, I was an editor. I was uh, again uh, spending my my uh, career as uh, as, as say, I, I've never been a soldier to battle, so also uh, I spent the time in Tel Aviv. So also as a news editor, I, my my life work and uh, white rooms, white ceilings, editing the reality through the computer, but never feeling the reality. And for the first time in my life, when I went to the field, and my chief editor told me for the first week of the second Intifada, and my chief editor told me, now, now is a good time for you to understand how stories are brought to life. You spend all your time in the newsroom, in the news desk, go once, go to the field. And I went for the first time in my life outside of the field. It was my uh, South American trip in many aspects. It was the first time I'm going out of my, of my home and I, for a week in, in, in a, the fighting area, in a fighting zone, and and and, and you, I've seen bodies, was a war, uh, and I was trying to talk to the commander. That, well, I had a mission to to escort a commander who was 25 years uh, old, and and I at the first moment I tried to talk to him. I understood I want to gain any stories for for my magazine for me because he. But all he could say was that we are doing the best job we can to protect the civilians of Israel. I mean, it was totally flat. And I was sitting outside, uh, totally depressed. I never knew how I'm going to bring stories uh, to the magazine. And suddenly I heard the guy, uh, a beautiful, uh, dark-skinned, uh, short guy, walking there and saying, well, brother, this is fucking Vietnam. And I said, OK, this is what my newspaper wants me to bring. So I, I came to him and said, hi. I'm Newspaper, I want to talk to you. And he, he looked at me with hatred and he said, Look, if there's something I report at the enemy, the reporters, if you don't want to find yourself buried under the sand in the morning here, don't talk to me. And as I, I was trying to talk more, I was trying to convince him of everything I said about myself just made him make more or not that we will talk more because everything about me, I'm from Tel Aviv, I, 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 I was a warrior. Uh, I'm Ashkenazi, I'm a journalist, I'm gay, I'm everything. And suddenly, uh, and, 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 but then, I mean, it, an hour later, he decided to sit and tell me the stories because he really felt that when I sit in coffee shops or bars in Tel Aviv, uh, at the end of the night, I will never even turn on the radio to listen if he was killed because we see him in the bars in Tel Aviv or in the beaches and we never care about people that are spending 20 minutes from us, people are spending their nights in shelters because who be someone going down. And, um, and he was so angry about we are sending him to die for us, not caring about it. But he, when he told the very graphical <coughs> details of what being a soldier is all about, I was, I was so angry at myself for not knowing. And I was so fascinated by everything about it. And I was so fascinated by trying to understand why when he talks about it, even if he says we were dying for nothing, uh, he, he was talking about it with some kind of a yearning. Uh, and I was trying to understand his romantic show shock. Why, why he doesn't miss the war? Anyway, well, uh, this, just for the background, we want a short background. It's, and it's again, relates to mothers, because this is a story about the four mothers movements. 
the civilian mothers movement, the mothers of soldiers in Israel, that convinced the Israeli public and later on forced, challenged the army and then forced the army to withdraw from South Lebanon after 18 years of fighting. And those four mothers that said that, that for a while their, their kids didn't talk to them, their husbands didn't talk to them. It was, I mean, everyone said, you are mothers, you don't know nothing about strategic affairs, military affairs. And suddenly those mothers changed the whole Israeli agenda. I am uh, writing about a group of soldiers that sat there on, on the highest mountain, on the outpost, and got an order from Prime Minister, from the Israeli Prime Minister, look, we are withdrawing in a year, but we are withdrawing. It's not important to be there, but just wait for you because I'm trying to do it while negotiating. It's not I'll do it uh, uh, just, uh, I mean, they were sitting there for a year, waiting for the withdrawal, asking why do I have to be the last casualty? Why do my friend has to lose his arms and legs? Why do I have to spend a year of my life waiting for going out? Why not going out now and no one had an answer? But the order was just try not to die. The Israeli public right now is too weak to suffer more casualties. Sit there and try not to die. They've never seen the enemy in their eyes. There were just missiles pouring from the sky. It was some kind of a Russian a shooter that was brought by his ballot to uh, to uh, uh, the combat became much more sophisticated. So they were just sitting there for a year waiting. And that year for me, it wasn't really a war story. It was a story about what being 18 is all about. It was a story about the Lord of the Flies story. It was taking a group of kids to an adolescent kingdom without any other to supervise and checking what kind of language will they create, what kind of, 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 uh, of, of fears and everything. Because while they were not fighting, it's not, it's not a typical war story that starts today down the hill and ends when the flag is story about how war ends. So uh, in many aspects, I, I think that it was a story about, for me, it was a story, a coming of age story. Uh, and and, uh, and I've tried, I really tried to check, uh, again, it's my alter ego, to check what I think is all about with us. Uh, so, so basically, it's, it's not really a, a, a war story. Not really a war story. You but should have told us that before we invited you. <laughs> I would say. Um, but you know, the, the interesting thing is that well, well, you're, you know, well, they're sitting there for a year and trying to, I mean, when the, of course, when you are not in an action, you are much more, you are fearful, and fear is something addictive, and, and, and you deal with that, and it's something addictive, and, and when you, so the, the commander gave the orders not to say many words were forbidden. The young man, he's 21 year old, said, you're not allowed to say killed. So they invented new words. They were saying uh, wasted. You're not allowed to say scared. So they say uh, eaten. So eventually it's a story about a language that is created by adolescent people. Right. There's a lot of great war writing that has to talk about how war either perverts language, you know, Orwell, Paul Fussell, um, Catch-22 just turned 50. I don't know how many people went to the event for that. Um, 